This is called the Hinkle Hats, and we're going to do a taste test on this pepper today. So let's take a closer look at the Hinkle Hats pepper. This is an awesome pepper actually. I like this pepper a lot. I can't wait to get some of these dried out. It'll be my first year drying them out, see what they taste like. But I did taste test this last year and man, this thing has got some kind of crazy heat on it. It's very, very hot for this pepper. Totally threw me off. I thought it would be warm, but not like just insane heat. From what I remember, this thing was really, really hot for a pepper. So, but I like this pepper a lot, and I do grow it, not just for the nostalgia part, but I do grow because I like to eat them, cut them up and put them in salsa or salad or fry them up or mix them with your meats and stuff like that. So, let's take a look at the stem. And the stem is smooth, but it's a little raspy. It has a little hair on it. And of course, you know, as the plant gets bigger and grows more like a tree, it's going to become woody. But in its younger stage, it's going to be a little bit raspy. So that's one of the things you want to look for. There is no purpling in the stem, but just at the node, a little bit right there, I believe you can see that. Right? A little purpling there. The leaf is generally a narrow leaf on this plant. It's not a real broad leaf, like, say, something like this. <laughs> it's bigger than my hand. So yeah, the leaf is generally a narrow leaf. And this plant can get as big as like three feet. I've had this plant get as tall as three feet. I mean, I only grew for a few years, but it did get a lot bigger than what you see here. Now this year, the plants are really small. And in a way that's kind of good for me because I can bring them in and really consolidate how I'm gonna just winter them over just to keep them in a dormant state throughout the winter so I don't need much foliage and I don't need a whole lot of height on them I just need to get them through the winter so the smaller the better believe it or not and then in spring when I go to bring them out next year this plant will explode with growth it can get big if you give it the right environment the right nutrients and and fertilizer and you take care of it good yeah it's going to get big on you and you'll get quite a few of these peppers a pretty heavy producer I usually get I don't know anywhere between two dozen and and up uh, this year is very low because the plant is small there's not much on there but here's a look at the pepper on the plant you can see the way it pops out of there from the node just comes out from the node one single pepper in fact we're going to pick this one and there's no flowers so i can't really show you any flowers the end of the year all the flowers dropped it's called hinkle hats h-a-t-z so i'm not sure what language that is i'm assuming it's german or it could be something else i'm not entirely sure but this pepper is a very very hot pepper uh, last year it threw me for a loop now it's not a gut cramper type of hot pepper but it's got this raging furious type of heat that comes out of it it's, it's like a very furious type of heat direct it's very hot and, and it just hits you now that's what i remember so let's see if this year tamed it down a little bit maybe it's not as furious as it was in the past but here's a look at calyx on top you can see what that looks like it's sort of like a, a little bell pepper a tiny little mini bell is what it really looks like but don't let that throw you off because this thing will get you all right so here we are back in the greenhouse getting ready to do another taste test with the hinkle hats i'm really really not looking forward to this thing it's morning time i didn't have coffee this could be a harsh experience for me not looking forward to it but I need to get these reviews done, and I can only do so many hot pepper reviews a day. Literally, can't do too many of them. They will whack your insides out real good. Even if I put them in salsa, eventually it's just like, I, I can't keep eating them. It's just, it, it will get to me if you know what I'm saying. So I could get away with this and a couple others throughout the day and if I eat food throughout the day kind of lessens any kind of bad effect you might get from it but when you eat, when you're doing four or five of these reviews a day after about two days or three days 
you're you're gonna have a bad day sooner or later. It just happens. Boom, you know, it's a bad day. So anyway, so this is the Hinkle Hats. As you can see, it's a small pepper, and it kind of looks like a, a little type of bell pepper. And it, just looking at it, you might be like, yeah, that doesn't look like it'll be hot. Let me tell you something. This pepper is very ferociously hot. I remember it from last year eating this thing. And I bit into it, and there was like a gas inside of the thing. That There's always this capsaicin gas. I always talk about that quite often. And it's kind of a precautionary for people who don't eat a lot of these hot peppers. There is a gas associated with these peppers that gets released. And that you inhale that or it gets in your sinuses and you can't stop sneezing or you can't stop coughing. It's not necessarily going to close your windpipe. It's just it's going to throw you off. It's going to give you a bad experience. Just keep that in mind. You kind of want to bite it and let the gas release from it and then eat it. And then you shouldn't get that coughing or sneezing effect. I get this sneezing frenzy that goes on for 10-15 minutes so it just gets into my sinuses and then it just causes that now some peppers are worse than others this one's a pretty bad one I, if I remember correctly this one had a gas in it like a pepper spray boom anyway that's the Hinkle Hats so let's give it a bite no gas so far it's making me want to swallow so far, no heat cups. It is hot, but it's nowhere near as hot as it was last year. I don't know what I was doing last year to get my peppers to get as hot as they did. I was getting peppers that were exceeding the Scoville scale by a large amount. I don't know what I did. It must have had something to do with me adding all that Epsom salt. I add a tremendous amount of Epsom salt to my plants. I mean, I water them maybe three days a week with Epsom salt. and A good amount. So they pretty much get Epsom salt every single day. That Epsom salt must have something to do with it. its heat a lot of times. Now this year I didn't really give it Epsom salt because it wasn't doing any good. There's nothing wanted to grow at all this year. It was just an off year for peppers last year. But let's get into the heat of this first. So far I took that first bite off it. It wasn't insane heat. It's a weird kind of burning warm stinging type of a burn and it's consistent and it's it's staying there it's pretty much hitting the end of my tongue right now a little bit on the roof of the mouth and that's about it really it's not hitting the back of the throat nothing with the stomach no heat cups nothing like that let me finish the rest of this and see if the heat picks up i didn't eat the seeds but as far as the rest of the pepper goes so far it's a little warmer i'm not going to put this past 1200 it's really low, to be honest with you. It's, I, I, it's actually disappointing. I was expecting this thing to make me cry today, but, but the heat is picking up quite a bit. It's coming across the tongue now. It's really affecting the end of my tongue, mostly. Not anywhere down the, from the middle part, basically. The back, nothing. It's really affecting the tip of the tongue and the very top, that whole region. If there is burning on the top of my roof of my mouth now, I can't really tell because the, the heat on my tongue really picked up a lot. I can't focus anywhere else. It picked up quite a bit coming up towards the seeds. It's a nice heat this year. Again, I can't put this past 1200 on a Scoville. A little bit on the lips are tingling a little bit. It's a little warm. That's it. Now, as far as the taste goes, it doesn't have a fruity taste. It kind of has a nice unfruity pepper taste, rich in flavor. This would make a fabulous, absolutely fabulous pickling pepper. This is the kind of pepper that I like. I don't necessarily always look for sweet peppers per se, but I do like peppers that have that rich pepper flavor without the sweetness or fruitiness. I really don't care for the fruitiness too much, except in certain dishes. But like if I'm going to cook like a, for example, home fries you're going to make for breakfast, those home fries, I like to cook those with hot peppers. And I look for a certain pepper taste when I do my home fries. This is that type of pepper that'll go really good with home fries. If you're looking for something that's not necessarily sweet or fruity, this is pretty good. Though, let me say this, there was a very slight sweetness to it because it's very ripe. Very slight. It wasn't overwhelming. It didn't fill your whole flavor sensation with sweetness. It wasn't tasting like apple or anything like that. There was a little sweetness to it. It wasn't like bitter or anything like that. But you really can taste the richness of the pepper, which is not really that common with a lot of peppers. 
usually with peppers, you'll either get like a sweetness to it or it's a watery effect or it's, you know, different things like that are common with pepper. You get the fruity flavor with it. This doesn't have any fruity flavor. It was a nice, rich flavor. The only thing I could say is that it's a good meat pepper. It definitely go good with your meats. Go really good with sausages and stuff like that. And it's probably superb for pickling if you're going to pickle your peppers. Definitely superb for that. It's not the kind of pepper you're going to stuff and grill. And you could throw these on a grill and soften them up. But you could put them in salads and things like that. It's a pretty good all-around hot pepper. It's got Again, it's got a nice flavor. Now, the heat may vary on these. I could probably pick another one off of there, bite into it, and I might be screaming from it. So the heat does vary, obviously, with peppers. And this one can range anywhere from, like I just told you, 1,200 to 20,000. I mean, the, the range can go as probably as high as that. What I can say is that it's a nice pepper. I grow them every year. I will be growing these every year, probably for the rest of my life. I do like the taste of this pepper a lot. Eventually, what will happen with me, you see me growing all these varieties. Eventually, what happens when the nostalgia wears off for me, like I've grown it for years, and it's like I got plenty of seed for it. I can always grow it again. Eventually, I'm going to end up stopping growing certain varieties because I'm not really eating them. I'm just collecting seeds, and the only reason I'm growing them is for the look and to collect the seeds and maybe sell the seeds. That's really it. Like I say, this pepper happened to be around 1,200 Scovilles. Hit the end of the tongue, really. It didn't really do too much else. And that's it, you know. That's all I can say. That's your pepper review for the Hinkle Hats pepper. I will leave links in the description below for Amazon. In the future, I will be offering seeds on a website. Eventually, one day, I'll start a website and then I can offer you a lot of these different varieties of seeds, and you may even be interested in buying some of the, the hybrids that come out from year to year. So I can just collect the pepper and send you the whole pepper. And rather than taking the seeds out, you get the whole pepper and you grow it, and whatever comes out of it is sort of like a mystery bag. Good luck type thing. But I'll make that stuff available in the future. So right now, I'm just, I, I don't have time for it. But that's it. That's your review for the Hinkle Hats. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care.